Hi, I'm Don from Don Drones On. We held our latest quarterly meeting with Transport Canada on April the 3rd. Let's check it out and dive right in. We hold these quarterly video meetings between the DPAC Steering Committee and the Transport Canada RPAS team to discuss drone-related issues and concerns from a recreational and small commercial drone pilot perspective. And I have to say, the meetings are always productive with good, open conversations and discussions. At this meeting, the TC team consisted of Jeremy Fountain, Mark van der Regen, Sylvain Bourque, Gilbert McCauley, Jason Rule, and Ferry Pan. Quite a contingent. Deepak was represented by Jean Lamoureux, Mike Hill, and myself. Jeremy opened the meeting to announce that he was about to leave Transport Canada as a career move, and his replacement would be announced shortly. I want to take this opportunity to really thank Jeremy for his positive and progressive perspectives and his willingness to work with us so openly over the past two years and creating a better environment for safe and legal recreational drone operations. So with that, good luck in your next chapter, Jeremy. The meeting agenda covered five topics, an update on the aviation radio issue, a quick status update on the new regulations, a discussion about flying over national parks, an oddity about the Winnipeg airport designation, and the definition of advertised events. Let's quickly walk through these. The first topic was an update on the aviation radio issue. This issue has been ongoing since August of 2022, when a drone pilot came forward to say that his application for a base station license for a handheld aviation radio was denied by ISET, the organization that controls such things. And yes, you do need both your ROC A certification and a base station license to transmit on the aviation radio frequencies. Transport, Transport Canada, Nav Canada, and ISET have been hashing it out ever since. The most recent agreement was to engage a few individuals as a trial, and our very own DPAC steering committee member, Steve Bannister, was one of those guinea pigs. While he has not yet been denied a base station license, he has also not yet received a green light, which is very frustrating. Jeremy assured us that progress was being made behind the scenes and that I said needed time to update the procedures and checklists. So stay tuned for further updates. Yeah, and that was a radio dad joke. Stay tuned, get it? Pretty funny, eh? No? Okay. Our second topic was a quick check on the progress towards releasing the new proposed regulations. Jeremy confirmed that everything was on track towards a spring 2025 coming into force date and that the next thing to wait for was Canada Gazette 2 with the official announcement. He also emphasized that Transport Canada was serious about reviewing and considering all the input and feedback they've received on the proposed changes. But he also hinted that there were, was likely not going to be any huge or at least substantive changes in the proposals, since that would require another round of consultations. I understand that, of course, but at the same time, wouldn't it be better to take that time, get it right, and do another focused feedback round? Okay, probably I would just go nuts if I worked in the government. Okay, moving on to topic three, flying over national parks. We raised this question at our October 2023 meeting, seeking clarity over the regulations, aviation or otherwise, related to flying over national parks or wildlife in general. Obviously, landing or taking off from within a national park requires permission from Parks Canada, just like any other land. But the question was about flying over such a park if you launch from outside. We reviewed the various regulations, including particularly the interpretation and the aim, rules of the air or RAC chapter shown here. But of course, that was written with manned aircraft in mind. The RPAS team is intending to update the RPA chapter of the AIM to provide improved guidance for drone pilots. I'll put out a video when that's all settled. In the meantime, don't fly over national parks and even think twice before flying over provincial parks. Here's a personal experience that I found rather interesting. Recently, I did a short hike in the Bon Echo Provincial Park in Ontario. 
Other than the hiking trail, the park was completely closed to the public, and I figured a drone flight originating outside the park would be cool and wouldn't bother anyone. As it happens, before making the flight, I encountered a park official who was very helpful in providing directions to the trail, by the way, but I took the opportunity to ask him politely about doing a drone flight. He indicated they generally do not allow it and quoted an example where a peregrine falcon had attacked a drone over this park and was badly injured. Now, for me at least, this provided a very good reason to not even consider flying over the park, either from inside or outside. Topic four, and this was a weird one that originated from a question sent to me by a drone pilot who noticed that the Winnipeg airport, CYWG, was designated as military in Drone Pilot Canada and on the drone site selection tool, but was considered a certified airport by NavDrone. The correct designation was crucial since military aerodromes require an SFOC when flying within three nautical miles. Winnipeg is a weird case because it is both a civilian airport as well as having an official military presence. In fact, there are two contact numbers in the operator section of its CFS listing, one for the Winnipeg Airport Authority, the civilian side, and one for the Department of National Defense. My interpretation and that of the NRC team running the drone site selection tool was that the DND presence trumped the civilian certification and hence why we flagged it as military in both the Drone Pilot Canada app and the DSST website. Transport Canada, on the other hand, ruled that Winnipeg was to be considered only a certified airport because of the CERT designation. Drone Pilot Canada has been updated appropriately and the drone site selection tool is working towards that as well. But this is really pointing to a bigger problem where military aerodromes are not being designated consistently in the Canada flight supplement listings. The correct way to denote them is with mil in the OPR, but as this set of examples show, it can be all over the place. Some with DND, some with mil, some with both, some with neither, like Goose Bay, and then the strange case of Winnipeg. Transport Canada is working with Nav Canada to straighten this all out. Our last topic was related to the definition of advertised events, and I suspect this discussion was only just the beginning. Advertised events, being any event that has been publicly announced, even on social media, require an SFOC to fly at. And by flying at the event, they mean anywhere closer than 30 meters from the boundary of the event. Clearly, when they created the rule, they had in mind things like concerts or stadium events and things like that. The catch is that a kid's soccer game with a public schedule on Facebook is also considered an advertised event. And here's one that is near and dear to my heart. An open house drone event intended to demystify drones for the public and to show how safe they are. Well, that kind of an activity would actually be considered a special aviation event and require an SFOC, along with potentially a fenced off safety perimeter. Imagine going to a drone event to learn more about the safety of drones only to be greeted with a big danger, keep out sign. We really, really need to sort this out. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. I'll just close by mentioning that this week marks the second anniversary of the Drone Pilot Association of Canada. We now have nearly 3,000 official members who have joined via our website and nearly 8,000 participants on the DPAC Facebook group. DPAC is entirely free. Links to both of those pages are in the description below, and we welcome your support. Together, we form a very strong community. Thanks for watching. Safe and happy flying.